Hi, this is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about the duality or the plurality in one. Uh, when you understand one, uh, I want to tell you that in historical time, uh, the ancients actually do not understand one as the way you understand one. And I will compare the sound of English one with the Cantonese sound of one, which is which means mixed and confused so uh, and I will show you a bowl of wonton soup uh, to tell you you know why languages are very lively and very confusingly uh, intermixed together and also uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, how the uh, patriarchal society slowly changed uh, the neutral world or even a matriarchal world slowly change it to a patriarchal world to suit their power need okay so uh, first of all um, I want to tell you that uh, uh, just like the light I have tonight you know you see there are two different lights I put it like that exactly to show you the ancients uh, idea of one is actually uh, according to the prototype of their knowledge of the trailing thread okay I will show you one Chinese uh, writing and and this is the sound scene okay so all the one is actually a simulation of different elements. Sometimes it's two elements, sometimes it's three elements. Depends. Uh, if you can see it, I will make it closer. Okay, so so this is to um, join the two and become one, and this is join the three and become one, and this is Chinese. This exactly has the uh, Greek sound of sin, okay? In Cantonese it's sin or sim, but if you uh, understand it as Greek, it's symphony and, and synergy, okay? And then uh, at times, you know, it will be three elements together. Of course, this will be the Chinese uh, reading of hai, the H sound, okay? And then, but I will show you something there very interesting. Um, this has the sound of psalm, okay? That's why every time when you say the English word uh, same, it's actually indicating uh, various plurality uh, of the same type, okay? And um, if you compare the Chinese psalm with the Egyptian way of uh, indicating something plural, you will see that they will also put uh, three uh, lines right there next to the hieroglyph to indicate that it's a plural form or they will put the two you know indicate as a dual exactly like the Chinese ancient word but I will show you something even more interesting this is now an Egyptian hieroglyph right so this is exactly the sin okay and if I compare it side by side with the Chinese you will see that they exactly are telling you the same thing and bearing the same sound sin and exactly as the Greek uh, idea of uh, synergy okay to throw two things into one and then if I compare this to the to the um, Egyptian this is the Egyptian, okay? This one is the Egyptian, that one is the Chinese. And then if I put them together, you will see both of them carry the sound high, okay? The only difference is that the Egyptian, you know, still have the two trailing thread, two ply thread, and the, the uh, Chinese already moved to the three ply thread right there, okay? So as I said, the one and the one is actually assimilated into one single unity. So the one has never never meant to mean one it always means a simulation of dual entity or or a simulation of more than two whatever the situation needs okay so now i will start uh, the um tonight's slideshow okay Okay, uh, once again, you know, my research has been going on for more than 20 years. I present the view of an Asian uh, female uh, traveler's perspective instead of a male and academic view. And uh, I, I propose that, you know, we should understand our language core as the basket starfish. This is the core we share. Every single one of us is just a branch. We are not separated uh, family trees. And all, because if we look at it as family trees, you know, we'll 
usher in the human hierarchy and only we understand it as a basket starfish form that we share this core at the same time since ancient time then uh, we can be uh, look at each other more equally so uh, the uh, academic way of looking at uh, language family as trees you know needed to be changed okay and um, as I said you know I will show you today you know how concepts slowly mutated okay and uh, at the beginning of course you know for the very naive people they understand that a man and a woman you know together they will create you know uh, by birth okay so uh, you will see very very early from the Chinese uh, oracle bones uh, you will see that the Sumerian has this T form okay and it says that uh, it said uh, it represents a very interesting subtle mystical um, a cosmic energy that cause existence and cause life okay and you this is or has already gone to a very metaphysical uh, level okay but uh, I show you this Chinese word is a very very still very uh, earthly uh, meaning it carries a similar sound mean it means to give birth okay obviously this is uh, the female okay and then we have also a sign you know exactly showing the tea inside right there with this liquid dripping down actually um, I will not say whether it belongs to the female or the male actually this can be used by both it uh, actually also become you know there's the the meaning of the source or the um or a thread the source of a thread okay that of course the umbilical cord if you use it uh, in the in the birth sense okay and then uh, you you will see that the chinese also express the fee, the male part uh, ex, uh, like this similar to this a t form okay so at the very early uh, onset you know when the uh, oracle bones were there um, they were actually either matriarchal or actually at least parental when I say parental is actually neutral bisexual okay and then but then the Sumerian is kind of actually very uh, neutral right there but then slowly the world seemed to change, you know, the patriarchal world started to uh, lead us to understand this is actually air coming out from, from, from heaven, okay? And Chinese also have the same kind of writing, and you can see that the tea also existed right there, but uh, in various form, we carry different breathing, but then we all understand it as uh, words uh, or air flow coming from above, okay? So this is already a patriarchal world, and, and you will see that, you know, um, this is uh, I show you again and again this is uh, how the lamas used to write their manuscript whenever they write the sacred text this is the way they indicate that this is the speech of someone uh, from the sacred family or some uh, a message from above okay so you will see that uh, across culture across thousands of years we are still understanding things in a very similar way and the Chinese other than this understanding of the airflow uh, we have have a very interesting determinative it also started with a T form and then uh, but you will see that gradually they're still consistently having a kind of a duo uh, form like this not a single you know so gradually it become a determinative that we have and the following slide I will show you the interesting uh, sound that carry by this very interesting determinative that indicate to us you know the um, something to do with the uh, law from above okay first of all you know you understand the written law in the bible you know it's the torah it's very interesting but you look at the chinese you know we share this very interesting sumerian tea form it you can understand it's a liquid you can understand there's a line you can understand there's a tradition and finally it come to that and orally we still carry on the sound of light if you it actually means to code some kind of principle a ritual that you can follow but basically is more in the temple thing and is less of a law or legal meaning but then I will generalize it as the law but you can you should understand it more as a code or principle in terms of a rituals or ceremony okay so um, in Chinese you know in verbally we pronounce is a light and we, when I looked up the word light it actually gave me a very interesting uh, explanation it uh, gave me another reading of lay 
lai and lei hear that okay and in mandarin it will be li okay this lei when i look up the dictionary it leads to another direction it says that what your feet treads so somehow it means the way that you follow okay uh, remember this because i'm going to compare it to the hebrew bible okay so uh but following the sound you can easily extend it to the latin legs and the spanish lay and then the uh, finnish lucky and then uh, I will bring you to a very interesting Chinese writing there. Other than the sound connate, you know, into different uh, so-called uh, tree families, and, and we're still following the sound, It only that sometimes it means uh, principle, sometimes it means the law, it really depends on which culture you are in. But then the Chinese has another word, uh, the sound is lot, and you will see that we have a very interesting part. This part for us Chinese actually means the role, exactly as the lei actually means that what you follow. We actually, in the writing, we actually draw a road right there, and then we also draw that, you know, something that is written down. And what is this written down things that you have to follow, like a road? The sound of it is lot, okay, in Cantonese, and lu in, in Mandarin, and you can easily link it to the French uh, reading law as in law in English, okay? And uh, but of course, in the Western world, it more is more legal. But in the Eastern world, only this is more legal. The light, as, as I told you, is more a code, a principle in a ritual, uh, religious way, okay? So um, I will show you one very interesting paragraph from the Bible. And I put it, as the Lama will put it in their manuscript to show you, you know, what Isaiah, you know, 2.2 says. It says many people will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will tell us his way. Look at this. The, the Jewish people constantly compare to their Torah and as a way and, and, and the things that they should follow as the way that, that they should walk in his path, the God's path, okay? So they also compare to this ritual uh, way as the, the uh, path, as a way of walking, exactly as the Chinese writing reveals right there. It's very, very interesting. And then, um, of course, you know, the Hebrew word will be Halak. And this halak, you can actually, because the Hebrew uh, grammar, sometimes they have the he as the English article the, okay? So you can understand it as the luck. And if you take this part out, it's exactly, you know, all the rest are saying the lut and luck and low and low. And this is exactly what the road, the way the Hebrew was talking about, they should follow God's path, okay? And then, interesting enough, it also say that um, the, the law will go out from Zion. But I will show you that when I look at the 2,000 euro dictionary in Chinese, it actually means to spread out and make equal. The stress to spread out, something has to spread out and make things equal. Of course, the Chinese will make this, use this uh, signs to, to indicate the equalness. You will see that this is the Chinese word almost as a number two, okay? This is not a number two, actually you should understand as an equal sign in mathematical term, okay? So it's actually to tell you that to make things into one, to make it equal, either as a, as, as a tribe, a, either as a law, okay? So in a very interesting way, the Chinese uh, 3,000 something years ago when they formed this writing seem to be parallel with what the Bible was explaining about the way the Jewish people were understanding what their law was. So they said the law will come out from, from Zion. This is exactly the things that will have to spread out following the road and you have to follow the way of the path of the God. So it's a very, very similar, interesting way that they they, 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 they seem to coordinate in, in the Jewish and the Chinese in ancient time, okay?
So now I go back to the, uh, after explaining the written law, I will go back to this, I will fall, keep following this T form, okay? So in Sumerian, the pictograph is like this, and this is the Kundalini form. It either means the being, it also means the divine property that enable cosmic activity. That's why later on you can understand it's a breath of air, as the Bible keeps saying that it's the word that comes out that change everything. Or you can understand it as a spirit that comes out you know from the mouth okay so uh, the Chinese is a uh, very very uh, true to nature so as I said this means a childbirth and this means um, you can see the T forms follows on okay um, this is th more than 3,500 years old this is 2,000 years old it still follow on to mean the fountain the spring the source you have to follow or it means the thread okay so something you have to follow as I said this is neutral you can and understand both as the male and the female okay but then if you follow the sang mo even you you follow the mother okay and this is the chinese as a motherhood the mo or mao and if you look up the dictionary it actually equals the leader of a herd as you can see a hen uh, holding a goat you know herding a bull and then um you will see that the female was very very powerful at that time you will see that we share the Sang, okay so they share the same sound they share the same meaning and then uh, we we look up the um, the birth related words you know this is the woman giving birth to a baby and then of course it followed to the each sound as I show you that thread earlier on it's always to do with air the heritage okay and then you will see that if I look up the dictionary this word actually equals to the sang mei right there mei as you can see is a very powerful female as well the head of the tribe as well and you will see that for a long long time the Chinese also still following some powerful female and but what happened to the west then and also what happened to uh, Egypt so you will see that I now I compare the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph with the Chinese oracle bones they will keep having this uh, water or lines flowing out you know the sun is also missed from there and then the Chinese have also the baby coming down with the three strokes of water okay or as time went by we will still follow this three strokes out from there constantly and, and never Never, never change and that three line is very very constant in ancient pictograph okay and then the, the if you look at the wa pure water the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs still have the meh right there on the mime of the Maya whatever if you follow the semantic world you will still follow the meh Maya mime you know still it is the water and in ancient form they used three strokes of water to show it or the milk uh, of course to do with you know motherhood also to do with the me sound okay so this is a whole group of sounds that uh, develop you know from the same source okay and then they have also the tail also come arranged in the three line form and and having uh, related to the birth you know world and if you look at the Chinese we have also the tail we understood this with the three tail bind together the Chinese have this tail also it's closely related with mating and also closely related to your descendant so these two acts were related you have to mate to have descendant okay to have what's following okay the, so this sound is very very consistent and but if you compare this may and this is may this comes exactly the same sound you will see that the ancients took pride in punning you know a lot of similar words you know to play puns on their their, their similar words okay so and how about this S sound right there? I, w I have told you before that, you know, for a s time, you know, they follow this curving line of the water. And then it's also closely related with the Sui sound in Chinese. And then it follows right this, it, we write it like this, it's still Sui in Chinese. And But if you read it in Japanese, the Japanese borrow the Chinese writing. But interestingly, the 
the Japanese will read it as Mitsu. Mitsu, look at all this, look at all this. You know, they seem to follow the Egyptian line. So as I said, you know, you cannot say this is a line. You can only say that we share a very common core since ancient time. And we, we, we all go back to the common core. Every single culture preserve part of the original core, okay? So again, I take you to the ancient creation symbol. And and this is the me sound is to do with the being and the and the and the b okay so um, as hieroglyph you would be like that but I'll take you to the real world you have to understand the ancient seem to have very good knowledge of the fallopian tube of the female and this is exactly the form that is okay so this is a female form but then the the um, Chinese also have this writing. This is also the T form. If you compare the, the Egyptian god Min, exactly this, this Min right there. And, and it is like the side view of this uh, flow of liquid, okay? Both female and the male have the flow of liquid. And I take you to the very, very interesting tea form of the uh, Turkish uh, archaeological site of Göbekli Tepe. Okay, so this tea form, so a lot of the uh, academic will naturally link them to the male form, okay? So, but I will tell you that, you know, um, you uh, is a very uh, in uh, Eurocentric view that if we view it as only male because it this view can be actually very neutral because if you look at how the formation of those temple inside this temple they had already reconstructed there were two of this T form inside so perhaps it was by gender perhaps it was a reproduction of the female uh, or uh, reproductive organ inside and 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 or it is because it, we're talking about thousands and thousands years of development so we cannot uh, pinpoint it as one thing so um, no matter what either is matriarchal or it is by gender it cannot uh, be only the male uh, monopoly okay so or it, you can understand it as the the chinese understood the formation of the universe every single part is not uh, pure. Every male part contains some female part or the female part contains the male part. So the sexual flow of the liquid of the thread is always um, a, a neutral thing. So it was only when they slowly, slowly diverted you to uh, understand this T form as the word flow like that, that the male sets in and they, they become monopolized by the patriarchal society. They become the creation by a male's word alone. From then on, you no longer see the female. And the world we are living in now is the final product of all these thousands and thousands of years of taking over and the different trans, uh, explanation of what was a neutral world. Okay? So... But I will show you a die-hard ancient sound. As I told you, I compare to the English one and the Chinese sound one, okay? So in the Genesis say, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. So you can see that from the very, very beginning, before the spirit, you know, actually, who spirit of God started to hover over anything, there were already the mix of heaven and earth. As you can see the word of one, you either see the two entity, you can also see the... Uh, the formation of a two duo thing marker right there okay so for us one means mother means mix in a good way it means whole it means all because it means one whole thing no matter what it contains okay so of course you know this is exactly how the uh, cultural symbol of the chinese you know uh, for us um, everything is a mix you know of different identity so the sound goes on to the english one so i can assure you that the one is really means something assimilated so i will show you you know the um hieroglyph sound hai which means the thread and then the this part right there the the the, the trilling the circulating the the the, the cycling part 
become the, the Greek H sound, okay? And the hails right there, or house, they, however they pronounce it, is actually becomes the word chaos in, in you in English. So you can understand that it's only the trilling of two become the one, okay? So even the wing in uh, the Hebrew word ahat, as you can see, it's following this because the hut is actually uh, connected to thread, okay? And the hut is actually one and means together means join something together okay it's never purely one as you understand it okay so uh, i'll show you a bowl of wonton soup you will say that am i crazy what is it to do wonton soup but this is very important because this was a cultural expression in the chinese since ancient time more than two thousand years ago we have already wonton soup okay so it was eaten during the winter solstice to celebrate the creation of the Cosmos, because uh, in a very very early book of the Yi Ching, we have this explanation of the formation of the beginning of the universe, and one turn is the very very important sound. Okay, so the first writing is one turn and one turn in Ch in Cantonese. Okay, and as time went by, it changed various forms you know but still it carries the same sound and then the one as i said you know has the dual form right there either the dual marker or the dual two person right there and as time went by it it still have the trailing effect the hand trailing things together you will see that the three uh, the three marker right there still it's telling you that to mark things into one this is an uh hungarian sign actually to tell you that is to to join two things into one okay so as i show you that uh, the Hungarian use is the same the ancient Chinese uh, after all it still show you that to mix things into one entity okay to mix to get along or in a negative way it means confuse okay and then the done also it means um, you know the turning thing it also comes from the trailing of the thread it comes from assemble things together as to to, to make into one or somehow uh, very strangely it actually means be knighted. It sometimes carries the meaning of darkness. Okay, so I will I will draw every of this writing into picture for you with oracle bones. It means from the from the beginning. This is beginning. Okay, the things comes as two, and then this is air. And before it was divided, and one turn make into one. Okay, this is how it it you used to mean one. Okay, so um sorry, and um, it's actually uh time is running out, so I'll stop right here. Thank you for watching. I hope you can type this my program name in YouTube.